Who is Jean-Jacques Rousseau? Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the great French thinker and essayist of the 18th century, was the inspiration of the French Revolution with his work The Social Contract. Rousseau was born on June 28, 1712 in Geneva. He was the second son of a watchmaker who added a penny or two to his meager income by giving dance lessons in his spare time. His mother died 15 days after his birth, and Rousseau stayed with his father and under the care of his nanny and aunt until the age of 10. His father taught Jean to read and to make use of the literary works of his time. In 1722, however, he was involved in a trial that forced him to choose between exile or imprisonment. Choosing the former, the father fled to Lyons, leaving his son with his brother. Uncle Bernard had a son, Jean Jacques. He sent them both to Boise to be educated by a town priest. The priest, named Lambersier, was 30 years old. Young Rousseau immediately fell in love with this woman, and this unconscious and childish passion had a strong influence on his whole life. After this period, Rousseau returned to Uncle Bernard, first apprentice to a notary, then to a carver, where he worked for three years. However, this boy with a mild demeanor and mercurial character did not fit into the overly practical atmosphere of the carving workshop. He learned to draw, but he also learned to steal and lie from the other apprentices. His boss was a stern but honest man. Rousseau fled because he felt burdened with hard work and insulted. After leaving here, Rousseau entered the care of a wealthy woman named Mrs. de Warrens in Ancy to complete his interrupted religious education. Mrs. de Warrens was 28 at the time and Rousseau was 18. Rousseau became attracted to Warrens and sought the motherly love he had never experienced. The woman, too, found Rousseau's fiery personality at times overly daring, at other times shy and needy like a child, attractive, and for this reason, despite all the excesses Rousseau committed, she still kept him under her care for a long time. In 1741, Rousseau, who came to Paris to teach, was at a turning point in his life. After years of useless years, his genius was beginning to show itself. In Paris, he met Diderot, the assistant editor of the Encyclopédie, and the Dupin family. Through the Dupins, he was appointed secretary to the French embassy in Venice, but returned to Paris in 1745. In 1742, he married a seamstress named Therese de Vasseur. In his confessions, he referred to her as an ugly, ignorant, foolish, and despicable woman. He had five children from this marriage, who were left in an orphanage to save on expenses. In response, Rousseau wrote essays on child-rearing and education. Rousseau, who wrote continuously during this period, achieved great success with his essay Has the Progress of Art and Science Helped Corrupt or Purify Morals Written for the D. John Academy. His second success was even greater. Upon the performance of the operetta Le Devin du Village, he was offered a steady income and entry into the palace. However, because of the intrigues around the court and the greed of the people, he refused this income, which would be the end of all his money troubles, and he refused to join the court circle. In this way, he was acting in accordance with the principles he had first defended. Published in 1761, La Nouvelle Heloise speaks of the rights of the poor and the duties of the wealthy. 
Accused of moral corruption for its advocacy of free thought, it was nevertheless an immediate and brilliant success with the public. His work The Social Contract, which advocates the establishment of all governments according to the consent of the governed, was published in Amsterdam in 1762. According to this work, the basis of society is a contract in which individuals surrender their will to the will of the whole in exchange for protection. In this work, Rousseau wished for a republic with universal suffrage in accordance with the call of the French Revolution and defended the rights of citizens to liberty, equality, and fraternity. In the same year, he wrote his revolutionary work Emile or on Education, which advocated the doctrine of absolute religion instead of the doctrine of the church and the education of children. It is a powerful critique of the less pedantic methods of learning and the development of children in mind, body, and morals, and had a great influence on educators such as Froebel and Pestalozzi in later years. Fearful of arrest to prevent the publication of Emile, Rousseau fled to Lurden and then to Moteurs under the rule of Frederick the Great, a well-known art lover. Even Switzerland became a place to fear for Rousseau, who responded to his attackers in his Lettre de la Montaigne, 1763. Like Voltaire, he took refuge in the safety of England and the tolerance of David Hume. His wife Therese joined him on these journeys. Because of his eccentric personality, he was not easily accepted in the environments he entered, but his writings were highly respected. David Hume took him to Watton in Derbyshire. Here Rousseau wrote Confessions, an interesting document of his strange personality. However, when he came into a violent conflict with Hume because of his disagreeable personality, he left England and returned to France in 1762. He entered the service of many people, however, he had to leave all the jobs he entered in a short time due to disagreements with all of them. In 1770, he returned to Paris and began his masterpiece Promenades d'un Solitaire. In 1778, a wealthy financier offered Rousseau a house in Hermenonil. Here he could have lived in peace for a long time if his wife Therese, who had been faithful to him for years, had not cheated on him with a stable boy. Rousseau's body was found on July 2nd, 1778, having turned his back on all humanity with his wife's betrayal. It is not clear whether his death was suicide or the result of a sudden stroke. One of the world's strangest revolutionaries, Rousseau was aware that the monarchical system of his time meant the poverty of the majority and had the courage to say so. It is to Rousseau's work that, as Lord Morley said, France owes most of all the recovery of her whole system of society and politics from the fatal degeneration to which it has been subjected, and the strength to guard against internal dissolution and external partition. Jean-Jacques Rousseau is one of the most important architects of the modern form of government we now live in, with his enlightening society and teaching free thought, reminding people that they are not part of a society, but part of an individual. And I am sure that throughout this form of government his name will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching this far. For more such videos, you can subscribe to the channel and like the video. By the way, before finishing the video, I strongly recommend you to read Jean-Jacques Rousseau's The Social Contract. See you again soon.